Hey guys, this is Derek, and this is another episode of MedHead. So with the semester coming up, a lot of you guys are going to be facing organic chemistry. And yes, organic chemistry is not the easiest, but it is not as bad as a lot of people like to make it sound. It really just comes down to a lot of your study patterns and your study ethic. The first unit of OCHEM is usually most important because it's your fundamentals and you can't really build on something that's pretty weak. So if you are going into OCHEM, a good thing to do is to study for it before the class. Now you might be like, why would I study before the class if I'm going to take it anyway? Well, you could be more prepared and have an upper leg on other people who didn't see the material beforehand. So you're going to be seeing these things a second time. And not only will you be seeing it a second time, but you'll be able to start understanding it more a second time. The class will go way smoother for you and a test will even show. Now fundamentals are pretty basic, but when you understand them really well, you can understand the complicated things pretty well. So like I said, the first step of doing well in OCHEM is understanding the fundamentals. So what you want to do before class is pick up certain resources to start understanding the fundamentals. Now by fundamentals, I mean you could go all the way up from basically orbitals, maybe them talking about alkanes and nomenclature of simple basic compounds or molecules, all the way up to maybe the first mechanism with SN1, SN2, E1, E2. Um, if you don't understand what that means, if you start studying, you'll understand. But uh, SN1, SN2, and the elimination reactions are about the first ones you usually do around a normal class of organic chemistry. Now there are a lot of resources you can use to start getting a head start. And what you want to make sure overall is that these resources are easy to understand for a person who has never had formal instruction in organic chemistry. Now the ones I recommend are Leia Forsai. She is a kind of self-made, really good uh, organic chemistry tutor. I think she tutors in other things, but she helped me to understand things before I got to the class. Do not sponsor, or I'm not sponsored by her, so this just is just, she is a good person to go to. I'll leave the link below. Also, if you want to do other things, you could use Khan Academy. They're really great. I know he's a big name, uh, and he's for a reason. He has really great material really great teachers and really great instruction over there. And another one you can use is the uh, Kaplan Okim book. You might not be able to get your hands on it, um, or maybe not the specific one, but they're all pretty much the same, all pretty much the same caliber of, uh, of material. And if you get it on Amazon, maybe you'll get an earlier edition or uh, maybe a newer one, but this is the 2018 to 2019 version. Uh, it is, a little bit expensive because it's more recent, but the older ones, like I said, are fine. And we're gonna be going through this a little bit later just to show you how you might wanna go about taking notes and studying for the first part of, of the fundamentals all the way up to the mechanisms. Another resource that I recommend and I do not have with me right now because it's back in my apartment in Waco, but it is called the Organic Chemistry, or I think Organic Chemistry as a Second Language. And that's by David Klein. He's a great uh, teacher. I think he's a chemist, I'm pretty sure and he just pretty much just dumbs things down. It's uh, basically the organic chemistry for dummies, like those series of books. I actually don't, I recommend against getting OCHEM for dummies just because I've seen it and it's not as good as these other options, but that's an option if you wanna go for that. Now I'm gonna show you guys a little bit on how I like to look at notes, how I like to take them, and maybe how to do a review sheet for a little bit. Uh, I'm going to be kind of doing it from a scratch piece of paper so it won't be as thorough But like I said, there is another video where I show kind of my thorough actual notes So you can look at that, but I just want to kind of show you guys uh, kind of a trial sample run All right, so this is the actual Kaplan MCAT OCHEM book you might be saying why am I using an MCAT book when I'm just taking the class But the class is probably actually more detailed and thorough than the actual MCAT will be So this is probably a good head start. It just uh, gives you the major points not a lot of the details, you probably see some new stuff when you take the actual class, but if you review the major points beforehand and the foundation a little bit further if you want to, then you will be much better off than if you had not. So, uh, somehow this guy, uh, I got two A's, um, I got an A in OCHEM 1 and OCHEM 2. If I can get an A in OCHEM, you can too, anyone can. It is not primarily uh, how smart you are you obviously have to be able to understand things, but you can understand, you can understand things 
one time and not be able to regurgitate it or reproduce it on the test. So you want to make sure you practice. OCHEM is a lot of practice. So you can see um, a lot of OCHEM here. This is really honestly, honestly, aldehydes and ketones. You probably see a lot of that in the beginning of OCHEM too. But what I want you to do is before class, start doing the foundational things. If foundational is a word. So OCHEM chapter one, this likes to start with nomenclature. Uh, most uh, courses or classes like to start with nomenclature. So they'll start uh, with naming. I'm not gonna really show you how to do notes on naming because it's pretty simple, but you pretty much have to name and this is, see, it's a uh, very basic, but it gives you a really good head start. Because if I had not gone into OCHEM knowing, honestly, about anhyd anhydride and stuff like that, I'd probably be a little bit more lost. I might have caught up, but it saved me time and made me getting that A way easier than it would have been had I not gone over it beforehand. Uh, this likes to go into ketones and a lot of those functional groups. So this is a lot of just writing down memorization-based stuff. But I want to show you what... Uh, techniques you should be trying to apply or kind of sculpting for your own learning style for resonance and things that require practice kind of this requires practice isomers stereo isomers um, but I two hours later all right so they don't seem to have too much on resonance uh, they probably go a lot on that on gen chem but um, I'm gonna actually probably show you acids and bases that's a good thing to kind of show you how to practice on so Overall, um, your notes should be pretty thorough in things uh, that you would have not known and things maybe that you did know or maybe thought you had known uh, when the teacher mentioned it, but you want to just write it down and keep reminding yourself. Now, uh, the notes should be thorough, but the review sheets, which are separate, I make review sheets for every chapter, uh, should be pretty short. So I'll show you a review sheet for like biochem. So this is out of my binder for biochem. This is uh, probably, this could probably be its own chapter, about half a page here. Um, so it's not a lot. Uh, I won't show you how to go that through them, but I just kind of want to read through a little bit of the notes with you and just kind of figure out what you want to write down and what you don't want to write down. So uh, you might see things like, okay, so they say, a Lewis acid is defined as an electron acceptor in the formation of a covalent bond. Lewis acids also tend to be electrophiles, which we will touch on in the next session. Uh, section. Lewis acids have vacant p orbitals in which they can accept an electron pair or positively polarized atoms. So you want to make sure that you uh, honestly write down all the bold words. Uh, that's kind of just like a give me. But you might be saying, okay. So covalent, if you kind of know that this thing uh, with covalent bonds and kind of it's just not something that's really important for you, you could possibly, for this sentence, just write down, okay, so Lewis acid is an electron acceptor. And it's just as simple as that. There's a lot of fluff in here. And you also want to make sure, oh, Lewis acids tend to be electrophiles. So. Electrophile, I don't know if you guys how much you've gone into kind of wording, but electrophile literally means lover of electrons. So as up, as up here, it says electron acceptor. So I guess in parentheses, you could write electrophile. And they said they'll touch on in the next session section, so don't worry about it too much. Lewis acids have vacant p orbitals in which they can accept an electron pair. That's kind of uh, more into the electron acceptor part, so I wouldn't write it down. Uh, but you can I mean it's very personalized and what you know you don't know you know some things I don't know and I know some things you don't know That's just how kind of the world works. So not everyone's gonna know everything So not everything's gonna be uh, the same for everyone to write down, but you just kind of want to have just this is Literally just this whole area right here. It really strong down So by what I mean the chapters I like to condense a bunch now how to wrote down notes in class or maybe the original notes I would have wrote down covalent bond I would have wrote down p orbitals I would have wrote down all that stuff but for the review sheets this and so this would suffice when you're reviewing step number two to making sure you want to do well in organic chemistry class goes beyond preparing for the class and actually into the semester so you want to make sure that you look at your syllabus know how much your tests are worth how many tests you have quizzes or any other types of random things like teachers like to put in there um, make sure you have all those down and make sure you know where they're coming up. 
because honestly, these are the things that are gonna, which is gonna determine your grade. Uh, not to put any pressure on it, but there's a lot of pressure on it. So you wanna make sure that you are always aware of these things as they're coming up. The third tip I wanna give is to always make sure you do OCHEM every day. And I know a lot of people are like, oh, well, I only have it Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So I might not do it Tuesday and Thursday, which is probably not a good idea. You wanna make sure you're always immersed in the subject. It is a tough one to uh, understand unless you are constantly working at it. And a good way to make sure you're on track is to make sure you do some form of organic chemistry practice every day. Now, by practice, um, I could say maybe uh, some days you don't have to do practice and you could just do content or you're just learning the content and not practice, but at least do some form of organic chemistry every day because in the end you'll be stronger. By the time you get to finals, those comprehensive uh, tests won't be so bad then because you've done it every day. The fourth tip, this is eight, the fourth tip I have is to make sure you study with people who are in the same mindset as you. I do have a video on studying. Uh, I can put the link down there below also, or up there if I do that. But like-minded people also want the same things as you. They want to stay focused. They want the A. They want to understand organic chemistry because the time the MCAT comes around, it's going to be on there. And so you don't want to have to learn, actually learn it for real when you start studying for the MCAT because that never really turns out well. So when you find people, make sure it's not a really big group but make sure these people don't know way more than you because then, or either if they know way more than you that they teach you uh, the material really well because if they know way more than you and they kind of just think everything's easy, they might just soar through everything and just kind of leave you behind. And honestly, a lot of times you find people that know a little bit less than you or the same amount or just take turns teaching each other, that can work out really well for you and in your benefit for memorizing things. A fifth tip that I recommend is making sure, like every professor likes to say, go to class, but beyond that, make sure you're not in class just physically, but also mentally. Stay present in the moment. Make sure you're taking notes and taking good notes at that because bad notes really aren't gonna do anybody any good. But once you're done taking the notes, make review sheets. Now I have shown another video review sheets. I can also post that link down below, but I also kind of will show you later on the video how to make those kind of review sheets and how to kind of condense it down. Um, so maybe it won't be that important for the first unit, but for the units later, you want to make sure that before the class that you actually look at the material of that specific lecture. Teachers like to post the PowerPoints or whatever they're teaching from online a lot of times before the lecture so that you have some type of access or exposure to it. So you want to take advantage of that so that whenever the lecture comes, you can follow, follow along more easily, easily, that's not a word, easily, and make sure that you actually can be able to engage and kind of remind yourself of things you saw before the class. As always, guys, thanks for watching another episode of MedHead. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. Also, make sure to, if you subscribe, also hit that notification bell. A lot of times YouTube doesn't like to send you those videos once they head out. But I'll see you guys on the next MedHead, and thanks for visiting me today.